Thank you very much. Chief Guest, Honorable Prime Minister of Finance, Co-host, uh, Vice Chairman of the National Planning Commission, President Zaika, Ambassador of Japan, Mr. Nicholas Rosalini, Rosalini, our colleague from the UNDP. I also know many government officials here in the audience, some friends, members of the NGOs, private sector, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. At the very outset, on behalf of the Asian Development Bank, we once again offer our sympathy and condolence to the people of Nepal. I'd like to thank DICA and the government for inviting Asian Development to share our experiences. Over the last decade, countries in Asia and the Pacific have witnessed many large-scale disasters. Though each of these events had unique characteristics, there are common lessons that can be learned from their recovery efforts. ADB has provided significant assistance to countries in response to those events in between 1987, when we first wrote our emergency system policy, and 2014, we have provided 6.57 billion for disaster responses in the past. Today, I'd like to make four points based on ADB's experience in this area. First, it is important to understand the social and economic impact of the disaster. Based on ADB's estimate, the Nepal earthquake could reduce the rate of GDP growth from a projected 4.6% to 3.8% in the fiscal year ending in July 2015. If the supply-side disruption intensify in the coming weeks, growth could further drop to between 3% or 3.5%. In the fiscal year 2. 2016, agriculture output will remain weak, and we know that. And we, but the industry and services sector are expected to rebound as construction gets underway, which will return GDP growth to 4.5%. Given the substantial loss of food stocks, livestock, and farmland, livelihood recovery is particularly important. Immediate support is needed to help affected people get transitional shelters that can withstand the monsoon wreck seasons, and so that the farmers can resume preparation for rice sowing season, that is expected to start within a few weeks. In past disasters in the region, ADB's support has emphasized the recovery of job and communities. For example, in our support to Typhoon Yolanda in 2013, we included cash for work program, the provision of input and equipment to the farms, and restoration of basic social services to severely affected communities. I wish to emphasize the importance of adopting an inclusive approach to recovery. After the 2005 earthquake, ADB made efforts to involve women and other vulnerable groups in housing construction. As a result, 16% of the reconstructed houses were won by women. And in a deeply conservative region, like Pakistan, women now hold land titles, won homes, and as a result, enjoy a higher status in their communities. My second point is that we need to understand the scale and nature of disaster risk. We know this country is very vulnerable. I do remember the Jaikai study in 2002 for Kathmandu Valley, which estimated that if we had an 8.0 magnitude earthquake, 21% of the housing building stock could be damaged. We should also recognize that extreme climate events could further complicate and could have additional impact. Our study shows Nepal is vulnerable and could have 1 to 2 percent of the GDP loss due to climate change. The government, in my view, has made positive efforts in the past, and they do have a strategy called National Strategy for Disaster Risk Management 2009, and the risk, Nepal Risk Reduction Consortium 
which was supported by ADB, World Bank, UN Agency, and the Red Cross. The national strategy, in our view, has brought concrete benefits, positive benefits. For example, an ADB-supported flagship project on safe schools has retrofitted 160 public schools in Kathmandu Valley. I'm happy to report that all these schools withstood the earthquake and aftershocks. In fact, many are, provide, many are providing shelter in the affected communities. However, the scale of disaster this time is substantial and will require a significant coordinated response. My third point is that we need to ensure that the recovery process results in higher disaster resilience, both physically and institutionally. The construction process should, in our view, adopt an all-hazard approach in all relevant regards. Area-wide planning, that includes the entire affected area and includes proper site selection for reallocation, application of the building codes, selection of the hazard resilience housing and infrastructure systems and capacity building on safe construction are all equally important. We need to view the software recovery as an opportunity to strengthen building bylaws where needed and strengthen capacity and I may want to emphasize here enforcement. It's also important to look at land use planning for both urban and rural areas. For example, after the 2001 Gujarat earthquake in India, ADB supported the construction, reconstruction of 42,000 earthquake resistance houses, water supply, 3,600 kilometers of district road. By linking these with improvements brought about by area-wide planning and land use planning, future vulnerability was reduced. Such an area-wide planning was adopted, was also adopted by Aceh in Indonesia, and that had very positive results. My fourth point concerns the need to strengthen policy and governance, and put in place a strong institutional setup to lead the recovery. We should see the disaster as an opportunity to strengthen the country's institutional setup for disaster risk management. Many countries in Asia and Pacific, to name a few, India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, have seized the opportunity of large-scale disaster events to do just that. For example, India's Disaster Management Act 2005 was enacted after the 2004 Indian Ocean Tsunami. For the current recovery efforts, there are examples of various institutional models from the region. For example, following the 2004 Indian Ocean Tsunami, Indonesia established a new interim, which is for five years, a focal agency with a, with a specific mandate to coordinate the recovery process. Similar arrangements were put in place after the 2001 Gujarat earthquake and the 2005 earthquake in Pakistan. The choice of models should be guided by the scale of the disaster and the existing capacity of the central and the local levels strongly receive appropriate legal mandate and the power to innovate and reform. Bureaucratic procedures are critical for success. In view of the government's severe human resource constraint, and in a situation like this, nothing is enough, is adequate. The agency leading recovery should explore the opportunity to outsource beyond the public sector capabilities. Strong financial systems also need to be put in place. Nepal is experiencing sudden inflows of large amounts of money, goods, services, and is under pressure to deliver aid quickly. This happens in all disasters. This could heighten sometimes in the mind of the donors and those providers to accept corruption. This has happened in all other cases as well. In Aceh province in Indonesia, which was devastated by two th in 2004, by the Indian Ocean Tsunami, uh, ADB supported fiduciary oversight arrangement, including the establishment of internal control and audit system and capacity building for the Supreme Audit Institution. To support transparency of aid flows after the tsunami, ADB also supported the development of a regional web-based tracking system known as the Development Assistant Database. 
commitment. Uh, we are waiting and we will apply a very flexible, flexible approach to help meet the rapidly evolving needs of the country. Thank you very much.